I'll be honest with y'all, I have not been wearing a lot of makeup recently. I've actually been incredibly grateful for the fresh faced makeup, clean makeup trend because that's what I've been preferring to wear as my everyday makeup look. Now here's the thing about no makeup makeup looks. First of all, they still use quite a bit of makeup. But I've streamlined my routine to use less than 10 drugstore makeup products. Now on top of that, fresh faced looks can be a little daunting or even frustrating for those of us who experience acne or have hyperpigmentation. Because by the time we're done trying to even out our skin tone, it just feels like we have a full face of makeup on. But I've been experimenting a lot with how to conceal and blur red spots and dark spots while still maintaining somewhat of a bare skin look. And I think I've gotten it down with this routine. So today we're going from this this to this. So let's get started, but first if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. Okay, here's my starting point. As you can see, my skin's not doing too hot recently. I do have a lot of healing breakouts, but then I also have a couple active blemishes. But the name of the game today is to achieve a fresh faced look while also toning down this redness and a little bit of the unevenness in my skin. Tone. Now I also have combo skin and I am going to be starting out with a primer. This is the Milani No Pore Zone Primer. It is a mattifying and blurring product. Because I'm not using a foundation today, this is going to help just create more of a smooth appearance on my skin. So I'm just spreading that evenly all over the face. Now the trick to bringing out the benefits of this primer without putting foundation on top of it is actually to dust translucent powder on top. I'm using the Honest Beauty Invisible loose blurring powder. This is one of the best you can find at the drugstore. I've zoomed you in so hopefully you can see what this actually does. Just kind of focus on my nose. You can still sort of see my pores and skin texture. So we're gonna add the powder now. Now I'm not sure how much the camera is gonna be able to pick this up, but my pores in this area and on my nose are blurred as if I had foundation on, but you can still see my bare skin. I just really like this technique to get that smooth skin look when I'm not putting on foundation. I've also noticed that powdering my primer before I move on to concealer helps the concealer blend a little bit more seamlessly, especially because I'm not covering my whole face in coverage. So moving on to concealer, it's really important that you have a shade that matches your skin tone. Don't use your brightening under eye concealer for this because it will look splotchy. And for this step, I wanna use something that does have a decent amount of coverage, but that will still blend and spread really easily. And at the drugstore, the concealer that checks all of those boxes is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I'm using the shade Light Beige, which is probably my closest match in this collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dot this over the areas I want to cover. And my goal here isn't full coverage. That's not what this look is all about. I just want my skin to look slightly more even all around. Now with a damp sponge, I'll go in and start tapping right over the blemishes, trying to really maintain that coverage right on the spot where I applied. And then I'll start working with the product that my sponge has picked up and kind of go in a circular motion which is gonna help blend those edges out, create less of the little dots of concealer. Oop, I forgot my forehead. <laughs> and even though this concealer is on the thicker side, I find that it spreads really nicely, it blends down really nicely, and it gives me that natural finish that's not too matte. So it's not obvious that I have a slight layer of makeup in certain areas. It is also easily buildable. I am just gonna go over again this really red spot. Like I said, I still want a semblance of a bare skin look. So having a little bit of real life show through is totally fine. And this is blending so well now that we did that primer powder trick. I'm just gonna go ahead and dot a tiny bit under my eyes because they are looking pretty dark today. <laughs> Okay, major difference. <laughs> so I've actually loved the fact that with the whole fresh faced makeup look being so trendy, we've also started to embrace more of a natural brow look. Even with fuller faces of makeup, I've been opting to use brow gel instead of filling in my brows more shapely with powder or pencil. Now I have been trying a lot of drugstore brow gels lately and this has been my favorite. This is the Honest Beauty Honestly Healthy Brow Gel. I'm using the shade Soft Black. And 
And I just find that this has the right amount of pigment to not look overdone. It fills in the spaces that you need and it actually gives me enough hold to do the fluffy brow look, but not so much that my brows start to look laminated or glued down. It is very lightweight, just kind of my Goldilocks product right now. Plus the soft black shade is perfect for me. I have a hard time because obviously my hair is black. So if I use brown brow gel, it looks wrong. But sometimes black brow products look Sharpie-ish on me. So it's been pretty hard to find that middle ground and this does it so perfectly. Now the one thing is this is not waterproof, although I do find it to be pretty long lasting. The pigment just might fade a little bit if you are like sweating, but it's not gonna like run down your face. Moving on to my eyes, the only thing I do when I'm creating a fresh face look is a little bit of mascara, but I will curl my lashes first. This will make my lashes look longer, my eyes look more open. Sometimes if I'm feeling really lazy, I'll just forgo mascara altogether and just curl my lashes really, really well. But I also recognize that I have pretty dark and thick lashes, so might not have the same effect <laughs> on everybody. The mascara that I've been reaching for when doing this fresh face look may come as a surprise, but when I want noticeable length and volume, but I don't want it to look overdone compared to the rest of the look, I've been reaching for the Physicians Formula Breakfast Club Detention Mascara. This is one of their limited edition releases with their Breakfast Club collaboration. Now, I did get the scoop on this mascara because I loved it so much and I was so sad at the idea of this being limited edition and at some point I won't be able to get it. But a little birdie from the brand told me that this is just their normal butter blowout mascara, but fragrance free and with a different wand. That blew my mind because I didn't really like their normal butter mascara. I tried it in a video and I found it to be pretty clumpy and it was flaking right away and I just was not impressed. But this one I also tried in a video and I was immediately impressed and totally shocked. So that just goes to show how a wand can change everything when it comes to a mascara, even with the same formula. So what I'm probably gonna do is save this wand and whenever they stop making this, I'm gonna go and buy the butter mascara, even though I won't be happy about it having fragrance and I'll just use this wand. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly layer this up. And this mascara adds volume and length, but the tips of the lashes stay looking fluttery, which gives it more of that natural look. It doesn't like clump up the lashes or blunt them. Oh, and look at that separation. They just look so fluttery. So that's all I do on the eyes. It just adds a little bit of definition without throwing off the whole look. Now, speaking of definition, I typically don't contour and highlight if I'm really sticking to the no makeup makeup look. I just feel like it ends up looking unbalanced, especially because I don't have a foundation underneath, but I will add some cream blush. Now, I have a few cream blushes that I'll use in this type of routine. Today, I'm gonna be using the Flower Beauty Gel Crush. This is in the shade Strawberry Crush, and this is just one of my lighter shades. It is not gonna make as much of a statement, and I do apply this with a stipple brush, which makes the application even softer, but buildable. So I just go ahead and load up the brush and I am going to tap this pretty high on my cheeks. And this does have a slightly dewy finish to it. It's not gonna be wet or tacky though, but that's kind of why I'm applying it higher because it's going to act as a little bit of a built-in highlight. And using a stipple brush really lets you get precise with where you want to put color. It lays down a very thin and even layer and it blends it out really, really softly. So I think that this ends up adding a little bit of soft definition without having to go in with so many layers. And if you want, you can put a little bit on your nose for a sun-touched look. There's just one more step in this routine, tinted lip Balm. My absolute favorite tinted lip balm is from Honest Beauty and this is the shade Plum Drop. This slightly reminds me of the Clinique Black Honey Lipstick. It's just not as pigmented, but it has a very similar tone to it. Let me just show you. <laughs> See, it just like darkens the lips a little bit, adds more of a cool rosiness. And these are just really easy to reapply throughout the day. They don't add too much color. You can build them up though. In fact, I might shear this out a little bit. <laughs> and they feel 
so good. It's made with avocado oil and it's made without a ton of stuff, including fragrance, mineral oil, and silicones. I just find all of the shades in this line to be super flattering. They go on so smoothly, even if my lips are chapped and they actually nourish my chapped lips. So at the end of the day, my lips look better than when I started. <laughs> and here is the finished fresh faced drugstore makeup routine. I've just been preferring to wear less product on my face recently and I'm getting comfortable seeing myself with less makeup on and like it. And I don't know if that makes me a bad makeup YouTuber. And it doesn't mean that I won't be doing full face glam and colorful creative makeup looks here on the channel or just whenever I feel like it. But this is my more realistic everyday makeup routine. And with that, I'm curious to know what your current everyday makeup routine looks like. Is it more glam? Is it more fresh faced? Has it changed recently? Tell me in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Christine B. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I try a YouTuber's hair care brand from Walmart. I was shocked. I'll see you over there. Bye.